post my stuff on the website. Hello, everybody. I am Ani, creator and inventor of the Jewel Tool Polishing System. And on today's show, I am going to show you some of my techniques, quick techniques, I might add, on how to polish resin. So this is a resin cab. Show it overhead. Okay. So this is just a resin cab and it's quite rough. You can see the back. It's very unfinished and it's all rough on the side. So I'm going to show you how to clean up all the rough really quick and to smooth this, smooth this to a high polish. So the show will start as soon as I get some viewers. So if you're watching this show on another day, this is being filmed live. So I'm going to wait for some viewers to tune in and say hello to them. So if you are watching this on the replay and don't want to watch me say hello to everybody, it's time to fast forward. Just fast forward just a little and I'll begin the, or that way. I don't know which way that way. Um, and then I'll start the, and then I'll start showing you guys my techniques, but we have some visitors here on the show. We see Karen. Hi, Karen Nowak, Carolyn Store, Karen Miller Anderson. Hello. She says hello to everybody. They say hello back. Teresa Sarnowski. Hello. We're having a great day. Hope you're having one too. It's even better now that I see you girls. Hey, Diana Mosley. Hello. Marianne Madan. Hello. Um, so today's show, just like I mentioned, I'm going to show you some quick tips on how to polish resin, polymer clay, epoxy, or whatever else you got that is soft. So this can work for acrylic, resin, polymer clay, or like a colored epoxy. You know, there's like the there's the colored epoxy. Same same rules apply. Hello. Here we go. We got some more people. Hello, Terry. No, that's Melanie Abbott. Hello, Carrie Hendrick. Hello, Carol Barnett. Evelyn Renee. Hey, everybody. Hello. Exciting. So this, so what I'm doing is uh, we're not doing PMC. PMC is precious metal clay. Uh, polymer clay is what you would. So this is what I'm working on. We've done so many PMCs, you guys, the metal. So I thought I would change it up and show you guys how to clean this up. You know, it just came out of a mold. A lot of people do it, but it's really quick. I don't have much time today. So you guys are going to see a fast little action going on right here. So, um, so just as we got enough people watching. So this is... A lot of people keep asking me how to do the resin caps. And I just wanted one video to have in our library of many videos. And, you know, I do this. I, upon request, will do videos to help people who have a jewel tool. Could you believe that a company that is actually supporting their own customers without charging them for, you know, receiving help. So here you guys go. We're going <laughs> cool. Thank you, Marianne. So you guys, I'm going to get started and show you guys first and foremost, anything that you have rough. Hi, Kathy Contreras. Hello. Hi. haven't seen you in a while, girl. Hope you're doing well. Um, so I'm going to show you guys right now how to work on this resin piece. And again, so right now, you guys, you can you every so all the techniques I'm about to use can be used on resin, polymer clay, acrylic, 3D printed parts, or a uh, colored epoxy. So let's get this party started, and let me show you guys my technique. So let's go ahead. Okay. So you guys, as you can see. This is just a resin cab that was taken out of a mold. The sides are all very, very rough, super, super rough. Now, instead of using sandpaper to get rid of those, some people don't know that the scratch eraser, I'm going to grab the scratch eraser in very fine. And just so you know, the scratch eraser, 
this is a very fine, I know it's very faint, we'll remove all this rough edges because the scratch eraser can also work on plastics and acrylics. But you didn't know that. Very useful little handy wheel. And you know, it has a long life to this. So first things first, you guys, I'm going to get rid of all the sharp edges. So let me go ahead and turn my vacuum on. And let's get rid of all the sharp edges. Just, and you can see what's happening right through the wheel. Isn't that cool? Do you guys see how nice and smooth the edges are? I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see. Is that better? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. And now, like, let's say I wanted to get that back super flat. You can use the scratch eraser. Oops, hold on. You can use your scratch eraser to do it, you guys. Or if there's a lot of material to be removed, it's doing pretty good. Do you guys see that? But let's say that you want to get a lot of material removed. Let me show you a little technique. You can grab like your 220 grit purple or even like, you know, your 120, but the 220 grit purple is fine. So run this, you know, about high speed and just hold it there. Actually, this is a bad wheel. I just remembered this one is coming off. <laughs> no wonder I don't use it. This is the better one. Sorry, 220 grit. So look at how we can sand this down super, super fast. See that? Nice and even. Doesn't get any easier than this. There's still a little pit right there. If you want to sand that down even more, just hold it there, you guys. Hold on. Hold on. Now, if you want, yeah, you can add. So now we're perfect. Look at this, you guys. Super nice and flat. Now, if you need something to hold it down, you can definitely use our 3M Hercules tapes. And I'll show you how to do that in the next step. Yaro, do you have that anywhere? I have my, um, you're on it? Okay, so Yaro's going to give me something to hold it. So if you can't hold it by hand. Oh, I have one here, Yaro. Hold on. I have one here. This is the 3M, the Hercules one. Huh? Go ahead and put one here. Let me peel it off and show them what I'm doing. So here, right here. So I'm using the scratch eraser to smooth the back. You see how that works? We've already smoothed the edges. You can even roll them if you don't want them sharp anymore. And there we go. There we go. So we got the back nice and smooth, you guys. You see that? And now we're going to do the, the front. So you guys can see how rough it is. So I'm going to use two grades. I'm probably going to use the, which one am I going to use? The fine and the very fine. However, I just don't know where my fine is. It's okay. I'll use, oh, here we go. We've got the fine, this is the micro finishing film, and the very fine. So if you have like deeper, look at, this is all the powder that came, you know, off of the wheel. The rest went into the vacuum, it's lovely. So running at slow speed, I have the soft cushion on here. So any areas that I see that are really rough, I'm gonna address really quick. See that? Oh, you started it, thank you, Yaro. I'll do the back side with that. There we go. And so some of the rough areas, like this is a really rough area. I want to make sure I get it with the with the fine. There we go. Nice and smooth. Got that. And so since I have the soft cushion backing, I won't I don't have to worry about something there. I don't have to worry about any flat spots. Do you guys know what I mean? You can see the white cushion, yeah. So there's a white cushion. So the white cushions I primarily use only on the micro finishing films. 
Yes, and this will come already mounted in your polymer clay kit. Do you guys see how it has a little bit of a give to it? And this is great. Now, this is great for domed items. Now, if you have, like, let's say I want to sand the back flat, you can't use the soft cushions for something like this. You're going to have to use the one with the bump on for flat. So we have items for flat and domed. So this is the very fine. Yes, thank you. So what I did is, you guys, I just peeled off our 3M Hercules tape. You guys see that? It's already mounted on the card. Do you see they're really thin? Well, I, Yara mounted it on a card, and you can put them. They already come pre-cut, and I just peeled this off, and you just, there you go. Yara, can you show me how, uh, can you show how they come? So what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm just going to place this right here to hold it for me, and I'm going to sand it. So they come already pre-cut. If you guys don't know, I have these made, and they're made by 3M, and look at this. And they're awesome. They hold anything. You don't even have to use them for jewelry. You can even hang things on the wall and stuff. They're really awesome. So I'm going to run this about like slow speed, slow to medium speed. And just kind of hold it there. I just want to get a nice flat surface sanded. And there we go. That's all. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Let me make sure I got it all. And that should do it. There we go. You see how, look at that. That was being held just by that much and I'm done. Thank you very much for your service and we're good to go. Now I'm going to use the very fine with the soft at slow speed and just sand the face. Now I'm going to sand everywhere and you guys can actually do like you can take like a silver Sharpie. Hold on. It's like a dome. Like you can mark it a little. Oh, sorry. You can actually mark it just a little. My pen is dying over here. Just to make sure you know where you're, you know, you've been so you don't have to go over the same spot over and over again. And you just want to sand lightly. Instead of doing this by hand, you actually have a machine who's doing it all and you watch it. It's so lovely. Look, so that side's done. And then we'll just kind of rotate it. What do you guys think? Talk to me, people. Yes, I'm letting the machine do all the work. And all I'm doing is just rolling it, rolling, 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 people. Here we go. So I just kind of shifted it again. So we do section by sections to make sure I got, you know, the full surface of the actual dome. So there we go. And I think I already did this side. Yep, I already did that side. Just run it, kind of connect it for good measure. And now let me do the center. You see how, so you got to keep it moving. Don't stay in one spot, you know. Definitely want to keep it moving. You know, Lisa Pavelka always said, you know, keep a nice, you know, kind of movement left to right, rock it. And I concur. I miss Lisa Pavelka. She's busy with all her grandbabies these days. So, and there you go. Now, so, but do you guys see how I'm working? I'm working primarily in this area, the center of the, of the see-through area. So I can see what I'm doing. And I don't work on the edge because the edge can end up cutting it. You know, I don't want that. So as soon as I'm done, I give my little wiggle. And then I disengage from the wheel and I drop it downward. Do you guys see that? I didn't slide off. I went like this. And then I gently dropped it downward. Oh, I thought that's what you were doing. Okay, so there you go. So you just do your thing, do your thing. And then once you're done, you disengage and go downward. See that? Okay. So now you guys, guess what? <laughs> um, you guys should watch because I'm going to polish this now. So when you get, it'll look really high polished. So you get something called do not use with compound and you get one that says use with compound. So the one with use your com use compound is right here and you're gonna see a nice polish now. Watch this, you guys. This is my jewel tool compound and just watch. Within seconds, 
you'll already see the shine come up. Hello. Hello. Nice to know you. And there you go, all the way to the very edge. See how quick that was? Hello. Look at that polish, you guys. Look at that polish. Do you guys see the glossy you're looking at? This is gloss, baby. I don't know how much more gloss you want, but this is gloss and it's live, not an edited kind of video. Do you guys see that gloss? Look at that. So I'll just keep going. Let me do all the details because I'm a detailed kind of person here. Okay, I'll answer all the questions in just a second. Let me finish this. We got some people dying to see the gloss finish. So already we're there. I just... Nice, Albert. I love you guys. Okay, so now let me go ahead and clean up the sides. And then I'll do the back. But let's show you guys the finish. It looks like a stone, you guys. How crazy is that? You see that? So let's go ahead and analyze. No flat spots. All shine. Baby. Boom. Look at that. And all the edges nice and shiny. Look at that. Yeah, and I'm going to do the back now. So real quick, let me answer questions and I'm going to do the back. Hi, everybody. Pretty quick, huh? So now let me catch on to what you guys are all chit-chatting about. So remember, you guys, this is a live show. This is live. I'm going to answer all your questions now. And I will polish the back as soon as I'm done. Let me go ahead. So Marianne, your abrasive will be mounted already on the cushion. We perform this service for you so your discs will look already like this already mounted on the cushion already mounted with the backing and the cushion ready set go it will come like this your full kit so you don't have to worry about mounting them all by yourself we do it for you so basically it's the cushion you guys check it out it's this white cushion on a plain hard backing and then you put the abrasive on but we do it for you so who, who's next? Next. Hey, Bonnie, how are you? Hi, Margaret. Hey, Albert. Oh, she is? Where is? So rolling silver ingot down. Oh, Bonnie, guess who used to do that? I had to always melt the ingots. And then I used to put it through the rolling mill. Pull it, pull it, pull it. And then to make wire, I used to pull it through the draw plate. I remember one time I pulled so hard I fell on the floor. <laughs> I was a little kid. So whoever's into metal polishing, I'll show you a little bit of it, but subscribe to my channel. Oh my God, we just did so much metal polishing. I thought I would change it up a bit and did resin today. Where have you been, you guys? <laughs> Hey guys, better late than never. Hey, my Nicole, what, what, Nicole? Um, Marianne, awesome because it's my birthday present. I've been waiting through Francesca and Eva. <gasps> Marianne, happy birthday. You deserve it. Congratulations on everything above. Hi, Anna. Yes, having a great day. Thank you, guys. Hi, Gail. Okay, so let me polish the back. And Margaret said, it's especially amazing with polymer clay that includes a translucent clay compound. Fabulous. True. It's amazing. You right? Thank you, Margaret. You can even post a comment up. There you go. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, what else other questions are there? If not, uh, this is, so this is resin. Yes. But remember you guys, the process is the same with resin and polymer clay or epoxy. But with, with polymer clay, sometimes you guys, Remember how I mentioned you'll use one with compound?
Yes. So after, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a clean buff. There's no compound. No, this one has no compound. No compound on. You see super clean buff. So I'm going to run this. Wait, is this brand new? Oh, this is a brand new one. Never mind. I'm not touching this one. That's a display. No compound. There, I found it. Mine is not as fancy as the ones you get. The ones you get are nicely laser and print and printed. Mine is written by hand. So watch this. So remember how I polished it? If you want an extra higher luster of polish, you use one without compound and you get this even. Yeah, do not try this on a regular buffer. You will melt your pieces. So Jewel Tool is a completely different system. So please don't do that. So there, so we're touching it up with a buff with zero compound. And I can't say if this will do the same on other buffs, but I know that on my buff, because I have these specially made, will give you this gorgeous, sh gorgeous shine. So now let's do the back as promised. So now the back, you guys, since it's flat, I want to use my felt polishing wheel with very little compound on it, you guys. Hold on. I'm trying to find a clean, my clean felt. Here we go. I have one that's kind of old. So this one has no, uh, there's no, uh, I haven't used it with metal. I don't know what this extra crap is, but let me go ahead and sand it down. Yeah, so you should always have a separate wheel allocated. This one has a little weird stuff on it. I don't know what it is, but I'm going to take it off. Give me a second, you guys. This is how you clean your felt in the event that you have something else on it. So let's go ahead and put some compound. There you go, right? I'm going to put it back on my little card, my Hercules anchor. So now what I'm doing, you guys, is I'm slowing the speed down of my felt, okay? And so what I just want to do is just lightly give it a little polish flat, okay? And then we're going to give it a little buff. So do you guys see it? Oh, wait, hold on. So do you guys see how it's starting to get a polish? I'm going to put a little bit more compound on it right now. Give me a second. And we'll go ahead and get that polish. There we go. Just a light touch, you guys. No pushy, pushy. Just a light little. Oh, I'm just gliding over it. Just a quick little glide. You. This will cut the uh, resin if you don't if you push hard just so you know just let it glide yard let them see how light i'm pushing on it can you show that oh wow look at the shine i don't know if you no i'm gonna just put some more compound and then go ahead show the uh, show how light i'm pushing very light you guys you see that no pushy pushy you push You'll regret it. I promise you. So just a light little touch. And I just want you guys to see what we've accomplished by just doing nothing. You guys see that polish? I'm trying to show the polish. Okay. So now, so I'm going to take this off real quick. Oh, it's good stuff. You see, it doesn't leave any residue behind the 3M1. Look how awesome this is. No residue, isn't that amazing? So now you guys, you see this super clean? So now I'm gonna take the clean buff and give it a high polish. Tom, you'll love polymer clay. Oh my God, it's the best. So I'm just gonna give it a light little polish, you guys, with the clean buff and that's it. So that's how you work on the back. So again, don't push. Let the cotton fibers do all the work, you guys, please. Yes, it's so true. Right, Albert? I love you, Albert. Okay, so let me first show the final finish. You guys see that shine? Oh, that's a good little angle. Is now focused. 
You guys see that polish? So not only is it polished, it's nice and flat. I'm trying to catch the light. Yeah, no, no. So you guys, I could have ground deeper. Okay, you guys, if you want this solid polished like this, you have to sand deeper. Okay, I didn't want to thin it. Listen, if you want, you can grind this sucker all the way clean, but the holes in it are probably going to stay. Those are the air bubbles. Do you guys see that? And I didn't go like all the way. And if there is some scratches, you guys, I do see some, but that's not a big deal. If that's the case, just go back real quick to maybe, maybe I should have used the fine. The only problem is, is you guys, I didn't have the fine anywhere with the flat backing. Sorry. That's all I got for you. So this cabochon was made by, was this sent to me by Helen or Missy Prince? I can't, I think it was Helen Wagner, but oh, but you mix the resin and uh, she put like, I think there's dried flowers or something in a mold and you allow it to cure and then you pop it out of the mold. The problem is when you pop it out of the mold, it's like you don't know how it, you know, came out. The edges are all crusty and rough. The back, there's a lot of flashing around. You don't know if it's completely smooth, you know, so you got to modify it for it to look pretty. Thank you, Marianne. Most of the new resins are non-yellowing. I agree. That is true, Karen. The, the technology has really advanced and a lot of them are non-yellowing. Am I caught up? Margaret said something. Can the same abrasive... Margaret. Margaret asked a question. Margaret said, can the abrasives and buffs be shared with both polymer clay and resin? versus having separate sets of abrasives and buffs for each material? The answer is a big yes. You can share the same abrasives and buffs with the following. Resin, polymer clay, acrylic, and uh, uh, color epoxy. And polyurethane, those all can be shared because they're the same family and they won't contaminate your wheels. Basically, it's plastic composites in some shape or form. And same with the 3D printed parts. Same wheels could be used. Next question, Albert. So, Michelle, oh, you know, I'm so dumb. Yes, Michelle Chapman, also amber. We keep forgetting we have to add amber in this kit. Yeah, right, we got to call it the amber plus amber kit. Yes. It also can work on amber stone. I don't know if it's called the stone, but amber sap stone, whatever you want to call it. It works on amber. Same methods that I used here can be used on amber. Thank you, Michelle. Yes, Albert said something. I would love to share your testimony. Albert said, hey, Ani, that's me. I have a big, powerful buffing machine. Yeah, man stuff. I tried buffing something with it and then said, nope. I'm using the jewel tool. Happy place. That other machine is too dangerous. You know, we actually addressed this. Yeah, and there's no speed control on the other machine. As you saw when I was working with this, you guys, I had to adjust my speeds to different settings. If not, you'll blow through it and eat through it and it'll just be a disaster. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. No, all you have to say is, um, what's it called? Hold, hold on guys. No, ju just say that. Um, um, just say my mom's angry and wants me to whatever. Just say something like that. Sorry, you guys. <laughs> my, <laughs> just say that. <laughs> okay. It does look like a stone Maxine. Okay. So what I was about to say, Albert, you're so right. We actually showed we actually showed, um, have you guys watched that show? Um, it's called All That Glitters. And Nicole Richie actually sent me a video of the guy using a big buffer. 
it's like Project Runway, but it's for jewelry makers. So it's like a competition show. And so the guy had the guy, the, the the topic that day was to make, I guess, chains, uh, necklaces or whatever. And he went to the big buffer to polish it. And the the chain was ripped out of his hand and destroyed. And he was so upset. They were all shocked, like they were afraid he got hurt. Mm -hmm everyone's all thing and he actually was bummed because he had to start from scratch and make a whole chain because the buffer destroyed it it's true i've had a buffer destroy chains in my time to the point where the chain pieces started flying at me like they were like bullets and i went Gah! and i ran and it blew the light bulb out oh it's just a dangerous mess so thank you albert so let me most of the new resident okay I need to try some polymer clay. Oh, Tom, let me tell you, polymer clay is so satisfying and so just fun to work with. I don't know how to explain it, you guys. Whenever I say we need some polymer clay pieces here, we all sit at the table and make polymer clay. And even my adult kids will join in because it really is fun. And it's all the rage right now. I just want you guys to know resin and polymer clay is blowing up on TikTok and they're making it popular and they're making it cool and they're making it like desirable. So there's more and more people selling this on Etsy because they've created a nice demand for this market. FYI people just want you guys to know. And if you want a high-end polished finish, you'll be ahead of the game because a lot of those people don't even know about the jewel tool. Mm-hmm. Karen. Yeah, Bonnie, Amber too. Yes, yes, yes. Amber too. Thank you, Bonnie. Yes, Amber, Amber, Amber too. Oh my God, I just explained to my hubby how safe the jewel tool is as I was watching. <gasps> you were watch, uh, watching during dinner and he was concerned about your hands. Oh yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. I know whenever, so you, I always get pushed back a lot from guys because guys use oh my god the most scariest dangerous equipment out there you guys really i no woman in their right mind would go near some of their machines like they'd be like uh no thank you i like my life um but guys for some reason just gravitate to those in oh he yaro says because they don't know any better so i forget what i was saying but all i was saying is so when they see a spinning tool they're like oh and then they're like, but why is she doing it? And her nails aren't getting destroyed. And she's laughing and giggling and having fun. It's a completely different system than anything you guys have seen out there. It's safer than a Dremel, safer than a flex shaft. I'll be honest with you. Uh, you know, the Jewel Tool has a safety shutoff system. In the event, it feels like a tug. Say, God forbid you know, your sweater, your something got caught in it, you leaned over anything, it'll stop immediately. And people who have a jewel tool and they've stopped their jewel tool because they pushed really hard know that the jewel tool will shut off automatically. So you can't convince someone that their jewel tool will not shut off immediately who own a jewel tool. The people who are the naysayers and don't believe don't have a jewel tool. So once you come to the other side, <laughs> of the rainbow you'll understand how fun and easy it is that's all i can say and safe oh albert said something nice who's karakov karkarov oh i love that name karkarov no they don't lol average resin person tells you to buy a cheap pottery wheel oh my lord cheap potter wheel and tape sandpaper micro polishing pads to it I've seen that and it breaks my heart. You know, the whole idea, and I'm speaking honestly from my heart, the whole idea is when you make with some of these pieces, it's a labor of love. You know, you're doing it, you know, f to create, to enjoy, you know, to make something, you know, to feel proud of. And But then when you start to clean it up and it's so laborsome and it's so hard on your hands and your shoulder and your back you start questioning yourself is this worth it 
like, what am I doing this for? You know, that whole fun project kind of went down the toilet because now you're like scrubbing, doing things, you know, but with the jewel tool, the jewel tool does it all. And you just watch back and go, look how beautiful it is. That's a good, actually, I'm going to screenshot that and keep that, Tom. Hold on. Let me do a nice little picture of myself so I can put it back up. I'm going to screenshot that later. There you go. Okay, perfect. I'm going to screenshot that and post that. Thank you, Tom. Um, Gail, Gail, I'm answering your question, Gail. Oh, simple. If you wanted to make a matte finish on polymer clay, you could you could have left it earlier, like with this micro finishing film, or we showed you the very fine scrubby, the scrubby or the brushes, depending on, I'll show you guys, depending on, I'm not going to destroy this one because I have a nice, I, I need an after picture, but I will show you another piece. Just give me a second. Hold on. Let me show you another piece. This is a piece that I was about to finish. You guys look. So this was a piece I started to sand and we stopped. We didn't continue the polishing. So let me go ahead and show you how to put a matte finish. So I'm going to grab the, the, um, the very fine scrubby. And let me show you what a new one looks like because mine looks like it's been abused. I don't know where it is. Kristen, can I get one? My, like it's usually this size, but mine has been from Tucson, like just a three inch. I think I have, do I have a two inch? Uh, very fine. So this is the very fine. The real one looks nicer. Now this one looks like this only because in Tucson, not last year, not the year before, but the year before that, that's how long I've had this. This is almost three years. Uh, one of the guys at the show wanted to clean up all their like rough bangles and I let him use this on the jewel tool, but he like ate through it. I should have given him a rougher. Uh, I should have given him like the medium one, you guys, because I didn't know his pieces were that rough. Thank you. So yours would look like this. Mine kind of, huh? I just don't want to use. Yeah. Zoom out a little. There you go. Yeah. And so they really look like this, you guys. I'm just saying. But it works just fine. So I'm going to run this at slow speed because you can get different finishes. Look at this. So this will give you a matte finish. Look at this. You see that? A beautiful matte even finish. But to get this even finish, you should sand it with the jewel tool so that you get that even. Do you guys see how even this is? I already had sanded this and we didn't finish polishing it. So if I wanted to finish polishing it, watch this. We'll do half and half. I'll use the compound one. High speed, my jewel tool compound. And we'll do half and half, you guys. I don't know, uh, uh, Margaret. I polish all of them the same. So look, oh, I remember why we didn't polish this one. I remember it hadn't cured if uh, it hadn't properly cured. So, so a mat would be perfect for something that is not properly cured. There you go. I remember why we didn't do that. But let me go ahead and touch it up. So whenever something is giving you a hard time to get a high polish, just run it past the one that had does that doesn't have compound and it'll get it to a polish. Let me show you the difference. Yeah. So I'm only, I'm doing, oh, that actually came up pretty. It's half, half. So we have, oh, that actually polished nice. So the reason why that this didn't pop in color polish immediately is because I remember was to, uh, saying that it hadn't fully cured, but whatever, we polished it. Look at that. So then this is the mat. This is the mat side right here. So this is the mat. 
and this is so it's important to sand it even you guys if not you'll see the lumps and bumps even in the even in the mat let me go ahead and do the sides with the mat hold on thank you yarrow yarrow likes the way it looks i like the mat too it looks really pretty there we go so you guys see the difference so this is the mat and this is the polish they look they both look pretty i don't know which one i like better that's a great question so polished obviously and matte the mat has a completely different look, you, but you do see all the detail work. It's really nice. Who? Irene, Irene, you prefer the shiny? You know, it, it, it can work both ways. You can even put the tape and do matte and shiny, whatever you want. Yeah, you can use the Jewel Tool stencils like we did. Uh, we actually made one. Hold on. Not that long ago. Where is that? We actually did one. Remember when, let, go ahead, do the overhead. We actually did matte. So this was a clear. Do you guys remember when I did the stenciling? So I polished this and I left this matte. We did, there's a video of this. We did a live video. You guys see that? So I put a stencil. We sell those, those little those gray stencil papers, Yara, can I sh can I, you grab one to show everybody? Where'd he go? There. So yeah, do you remember, who remembers us doing this? Can I show the stencil, stencils, a picture? Just a real quick stencil. Looks like candy, I know. <laughs> Does look like, hi D, how are you? So yeah, so you know you guys, are you surprised that with the jewel tool you can do anything, honestly, at this rate? You love the pendant, huh, Margaret? This is cool. So it's basically, you guys, these are the stencils that I cut. We sell these. These are thin metallic sheets that you could use over and over again. And, and they're very resilient. They don't tear. Yeah, you can't tear this. So just so you know, we do sell the stencils that I use to make this piece with. Yeah. Yeah, the pendant is cool. I know, huh? So... What Bonnie's saying? She has an icon. I can't see it. Oh, you wave? Uh, I answered you and my husband said I was whack. You know what, Dee? I heard you. So tell your husband you're just sane as I am. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody be good. Say something beautiful, kind of people. Okay, Tom's leaving. Bye, Tom. <laughs> Love you, Tom. Yeah, so you guys, I hope this helps. So remember, the items I used are the hard, uh, not the hard the flat resin and polymer clay kit and the domed polymer clay and resin. So I did use the flat and I used the cushiony um, uh, cushions. So if you want both, we do have a kit with both of them. I don't know if Yara put the link. Okay, so this is the link for if you don't have a machine, this is the full deluxe kit. Um, Irene, you're so cute. You remember Bonnie, right? It's so cool. We did this. Uh, yeah. So this is, if you guys want to watch how I did the stenciling on this, all you do is just type in resin stencil. I don't know anything resin of my videos. You'll find this video. It's in my playlist section on my YouTube channel. Jewel tool USA is my jewel is my YouTube channel. Okay. Y'all just posted the link. Y'all how about the add on kits? Okay, yeah, I was going to post the add-on kits. And if there's any other questions you guys have while he's doing that, let me know. I hope you guys all had a wonderful Mother's Day, by the way. I had a really great one. If you guys want, if Yara will pull out as soon as he posts this, I want you guys to know that my daughter spent the weekend cleaning up my entire station here, you guys. Like, you don't understand how organized it is now to the point where I could find everything. Do you guys see how quick I pulled this out, pulled this out? It's because my youngest daughter, Alida, who's here. Hi, Alida. She worked tirelessly to clean this area up. And Yarrow also set up 
new flooring in here. So they really surprised me here at Jewel Tool. Uh, uh, hey, Kathy. Hi, Kathy Moss. Hello. So you guys, um, just can can they get a, can you do a little quick little pan of how awesome she cleaned up, Yarrow? Yarrow says now it's already a mess. No, it's not. No, it's not. I promise, Alida, I didn't make a mess. Look, I'm putting everything back. Yarrow, don't say that. Oh, you did? You're welcome, Margaret. Oh, so wait, hold on. Uh, standing ovation for a cleaning. Thank you, Nicole Ritchie. Uh, someone said, I received the Jewel Tool Cleaners for Mother's Day. Thanks. That's great, Ali. I love it. Thank you so much. You know, you got, by the way, happy Mother's Day, Ani. Thank you, Stephen. Um, what a great daughter. Keep it clean, Ani. I'm going to try, girlfriend. I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> hey, Melanie. Uh, hey, Melanie. Melanie, today we worked on resin. Um, but wait, I want to say one, a few things. I know. Sorry, I'm all over the place. What was I saying? Thank you, Bonnie, for answering Albert. Bless your heart. Yeah. Okay. So what? I, oh, I know what I was going to say. So Nicole, 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 Nicole Richie's there. And Mel, and she just mentioned that she got her, um, who mentioned? Michelle Chapman said she just got her Jewel Tool Cleaners. What she's talking about are these, our Jewel Tool, my Jewel Tool Cleaners, my bubble, my bubble wash and my jewelry spa. Um. Nicole Richie sent me a testimony, you guys. She, you don't know, if you guys know Nicole Richie, she's Miss OCD on cleaning. Needs to have it clean and is a little, crrr, so am I. So she was like, finally, someone who gets me. It was able to, she was able to clean some, you know, Nicole, can you just post it for everyone to see? Because Nicole cracked me up. Here, let me tell you what she said. This is really good. Because if you guys are looking to get a good cleaner for your pieces, she cleaned the druzy gunk out with the bubble wash. Um, and she cleaned, what else did you clean, Nicole? Hold on, let me read. Oh, okay, here, let me see what she said. So she says this. Oh, my God. I need this cleaner in bulk. The foam seems to be more concentrated on my test spots. She's so cute. I love her. Remove the chunks and extra gook off the spot I polished. The patina off the spots on way better than my ultrasonic, and it did not remove the patina. Absolutely. I don't want this to remove the patina, just the dirt. In the other spots, I wanted to keep it. I have to say, I am a cleaner snob. We know this. Thank you for your acknowledgement of yourself. That's an AA meeting. <laughs> Ani, Ani's anonymous. Um, for the ultrasonic folks, even at Rio, thought I was mental trying to explain I wanted an emulsive solution that took in the polish and dissipated it rather than the other cleaner that let it rise to the top. If you have an ultrasonic, you know what she's talking about. Like the Gem Aura brand, yes. Um, I found that it left my silver looking dull and whitish. I know now there is another human who knows what I mean. This stuff is amazing. Yes, you guys have to know one thing. I have used all those cleaners. I have tried them all in my whole life. And I know what I wanted when I sought to get this completed. I was not going to put my name on anything, you guys, that did not do the job. You know me, you guys. And so for Nicole, the cleaner snob to say that she loves it meant the world to me because I worked really hard to make sure that this did the work and it does. Michelle has a testimony too. Thank you, Michelle. My silver jewelry wasn't too dirty, but my beads I cleaned were awful. It worked great for just made cabochon. Nice. Thank you, Michelle. I'm telling you, it cleans like everything it's, and it doesn't harm the stones. If it's a natural stone, I'll say this again, it won't harm it. If it's dyed or treated or coated, it's going to think that it needs to clean it. <laughs> so just be mindful of that. It won't harm pearls, natural pearls. But again, anything coated, 
treated, colored, dyed, you're going to have an issue. Just think about what you put in the washing machine. You know what I mean? Something that is dyed, it's questionable what's going to happen when it comes out. So just be mindful. I had used it for about 50 seconds and I knew it was different. Yeah. I'm telling you guys, there's no way. Like, Listen, a lot of companies wanted me to slap my name on their product and call it a day. And I've tried all those products and I'm like, no. And I asked them to try to modify it and they just couldn't get it right. So I moved on. Huh? Yeah, I just don't put my name on anything. It has to perform. And this, you guys, is something that I have been using, but I haven't showed it to you guys, but I've been using this for quite some time. And I I just tried and tried and tried it on every, every different thing that I could possibly do just to make sure it was the proper formula in. I love it. So good. Okay, so you guys, thank you so much for today's show. I love you and I will see you again tomorrow. And remember you guys, do what makes you happy. <laughs> do you think I would take the ugly coating off some stones? You know, Carrie, it could. Do you think it would take the ugly coating off some stones? You know what, Carrie, try it. If you don't, if the stone is already ugly and it has a coating, try it. That's the only thing I can say. And, you know, or use your felt and clean them. Hi, Robin. Bye, Robin. Look, I accidentally got it on the mystic and it did not harm it. What's a mystic? Oh, put that up. So Michelle just said she accidentally got it on a mystic stone and nothing happened. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty safe, but I have to say all those warnings in the event that something could happen. Yes. So Margaret, if it's on textile stringing material, it won't harm the stringing material. That I could tell you. It will not harm the stringing material. That's a really good question. Thank you, Margaret, for that. Nope. This will definitely not harm the stringing material. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, uh, and it was, oh, it was? It was fine for titanium coated jersey too. That's interesting to know. That is interesting to know. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys. So the jewel, the cleaners, by the way, are also on my website. Oh, Yara already posted the link earlier. They come in a pack of the, the bubble wash and the jewelry spa. They come as a kit or you can get them individually. But just know that this, wait, oh, shoot, I just dropped it. The, the wash comes in a little cute little pouch because it comes with a little uh, bristle brush. And I just like totally took it out and it'll come just like this in here. And the, the, the uh, jewelry spa so that comes like that. The jewelry spa comes with everything inside. Hold on. Oh, this one doesn't have everything inside. Hold on. Yep. This one has everything inside. Okay, so basically you have this. So you get the brush again. Wow, that was a good catch. Did you guys see that? Woo, woo. Yeah, hold on. And so, well, you're rushing me. So this also comes. So this is like the little jewelry tray right there. And then these are the little solutions that all you do is just pop one open, add some water and leave it in there as like a little spa for your jewelry. And it goes just like that. So since this is all contained, it doesn't need a bag because everything stays inside. But this one, we put it in a bag because I have a brush. Okay, you Bean stole the pouch and brush. She thought Kristen sent her a toothbrush. Hi, Beans, and good for you. She took the toothbrush. I love it. Yes, yeah, so Margaret, I'm going to be having the refills of this solution on my website soon. I got to get those, and we will put these little refills, which she means are these. 
However, you guys, the one that I opened, like when I've just introduced this, just so you know, is still alive and well. I have the solution in here. So it does last a long time. The water is still in there and it's a little on the dirty side, but I've still used this over and over again. So don't think that after you clean stuff, you have to, you know, dump the water. No, leave it in there. Use it until you noticeably see that. Oh, girlfriend, it's time to change that. So it does have a long life. So don't, you know, worry yet. Awesome. Okay, you guys. All right, guys. I will see you guys here tomorrow. Love you. Mwah. Big hugs from me, you guys. Love you all. Again, do what makes you happy. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs> Bye.